Good morning, my wonderful FGC students. I hope you're enjoying the lockdown. Anyway, keep yourself safe as is required. Follow the follow all the rules and regulations. I'm here to teach you English language. And the topic today is usage of personal pronoun. The topic again is what? Usage of personal pronoun. And I'm your teacher, Mrs. Isirame H. Personal pronouns. What are personal pronouns? Personal pronouns are those pronouns that are used to replace nouns either as subject or objects. We have the subjective forms and the objective forms. Both the, object, the subjective and the objective have singular and plural. And they also have the first person, the second person, and the third person. For the first person subjective, we, the singular form is I. I am coming. Whereas the plural is we. We are here. When you go to the objective, you have the singular form as me. Give me the book. The plural is us. It belongs to us. Then the second person. Whether in the subjective form, in the objective form, whether in the singular or in the plural, the pronoun that represents the second person is always you. In the singular form, you. In the plural form, you. You go to the objective, the, the same thing. Singular is you, the plural is you. Then we go to the third person pronoun. The third person pronoun. We have in the subjective form, we have under the singular, we have the he, she, it. He is here. He was, he is here, she was here. It is a go. Then the, plu, the, the, the plural is they. They are playing. Then we also talk about the objective. The objective forms. Him, her, it. He gave him the book. She is one. She gave her a go. Or she gave her a, a bit, a slap. She gave her a slap. The plural form is them. The goal was won by them. The game was won by them. In using personal pronouns, in, in using personal pronouns, we should remember that the pronouns are used in relation to the position of the verb or preposition. The question we should ask ourselves, therefore, is what is the position of the pronoun I'm about to use? Is it before the verb? after the verb or after the preposition? You must ask yourself that vital question. Definitely, if it is before the verb, you are going to make use of the subjective forms. If it's after the verb, you are talking about objective forms. Also, we should also, where, we should also take note of where the personal pronoun comes, where the personal pronoun comes after than or as. When you have the personal pronoun coming after than or as, a subjective pronoun is required in formal style. For example, he is not as famous as I. I have in brackets here am, which means the written is he is not as famous as I am. He is not as famous as you, you cannot say he's not as famous as me that would be informal you can say that when you are talking with your mates but in examination purposes you can if you have options you have options and say 
a i b me and so on in this case he is he is as famous as dash is it a or me please the right answer should be i the arm will not be shown in the in when it's examination purposes no because that will like giving out the answer they are not as strong as we are but the R is in bracket because nobody will give you that. We should we put that in an examination. We, the R will not be put in, a, in along with the sentence in examination purposes. They will just stop as they are not as strong as we, as dash. Sorry, they will not pick. Is it we or is it we or R? But from this lesson, now you're supposed to know that it is we you are meant to pick. They are not as strong as us. That is informal. If you are talking with your mate, you can say they are not as strong as us. There's no that's between your mate. But when it comes to examination purposes, please the former in informal it is they are not as strong as we. I can do it better than she. We have in bracket there can. I can do it better than she can, which means they can is is there but it's not actually there because nobody would put it like i explained earlier on if it's informal you can say i can do it better than her but for formal purposes the subjective should be what you should take i also emphasize it here i say the verb in the bracket at the end of the formal sentences are usually omitted in the subject type of questions in the objective type of questions so as not to give away the answer the examiner will not put those things there in the bracket because they know that if they put it there they have given away the answer so it will stop at that those in the bracket will not be there take note point number three the personal pronoun I is an odd pronoun in number of ways. It's an odd pronoun in number of ways. For, for example, the first one I would like to discuss with you is that it is always written in capital letter, capital letter in any position it occurs. Whether it occurs at the beginning of a sentence, middle of a sentence, at the end of a sentence, I capital letter, it must be written in capital letter. It must be written in capital letter. Can I say, here I say, I appreciate your kind gesture. I here is in the beginning. It started with capital letter. It's, it's written in capital letter. Then, Carol and I are close friends. Me, that's middle, of, it's occurring in the middle of the sentence, but it is still in capital letter. She is not as tall as I. The idea appears at the end of the sentence, but it's still written in capital letter. Please take note. Personal pronoun I is always written in capital letter any day, any time. Whether at the beginning of a sentence, middle of a sentence, end of a sentence, it must be written in capital letter. Then, it, the personal pronoun I is, is the only pronoun that takes an that takes arm as auxiliary verb. It is the only pronoun that takes arm as auxiliary verb. I am going to school. Will you say you you am going to school or he i'm going to school no all of the pronouns it's only it's only i that take the the auxiliary verb am also even though the personal pronoun i is a singular pronoun it always agree with plural verbs it is a it is a singular pronoun but it agree with plural verbs for example i have done the job Will you say, I, I has done the job? That would be incorrect. I don't want to see you here again. Not, I doesn't want to see you here again. Doesn't is singular. It cannot go with I. I will always take a plural verb. I enjoy singing, not I enjoy singing. Point number four. Neither no or either or takes the objective pronoun. That means they take pronouns in the, that occur in the uh, in the object uh, positions. Neither him nor her 
will be given the job. Neither him nor her will be given a job. Not neither he or she will be given the job. If you say he or she, you are using the subjective, you will be very wrong. Either you or me is to sweep the class, not either you or I. Those you will be using the subjective forms, which is which will make your sentence incorrect. Point number five: neither nor or either or can take the possessive adjective. For example, neither her or her father was in support of the marriage. Neither her or her father was in support of the marriage. Her father, possessive adjective. Either him or his wife should be arrested. His wife, possessive adjective. You see that neither nor, either or, all, we always take what? It can also take a possessive adjective. Point number six. Some, some ing suffixes take possessive adjective. Some, adje some ing suffixes take possessive adjective. For example, they insisted on my pain in full, not they insisted on me paying in full. My, that is possessive adjective. Do you mind my going with you? Not do you mind me going with you? Now, also, point number seven says some ing suffixes take objective pronoun. Not all of them will uh, follow the, the previous the, the rule we just discussed. Some of them will take the objective pronoun. For example, I saw him taking your book, not I saw his taking your book, like we discussed in the pre in point number six. Some of them will still take the objective uh, pronoun. I saw, I saw him taking your book, not I saw his. His there is what? A possessive uh, adjective, which would be incorrect. I, it would be, I saw him taking your book, not I saw his taking your book. Example B, we watch them jumping over the fence, not we watch ya, yeah, which is possessive adjective. Except... Point number eight, a set is treated as a preposition, and so it takes an objective pronoun. Most prepositions take objective pronoun, and because we take a set as a preposition, it also takes what? Objective pronoun. For example, everyone except her was present. Everyone except her was present. That's an objective pronoun, the her there. Not everyone except she was present. If you say except she, that means you are using the subjective uh, pronoun, which would be incorrect. Nobody accepted the offer except him. Not nobody accepted the offer except he. You can see that they, it is taking the objective uh, pronoun. Point number nine. But, the word but takes the objective pronoun as well. E.g., all but Femi and me were absent. All but Femi and me were absent, not all but Femi and I were absent, no. It will always take, both will always take objective pronoun, which is me. Nobody objected but her, not nobody objected but she. Nobody but him objected. Point number 10. Let. The word let and the word between take the objective pronoun. This is because let is a verb and between is a preposition. And of course we know that most proportion take the objective uh, pronoun. For example, let you and me go for a walk. Let you and me go for a walk, not let you and I go for a walk. Because of that let there. 
because of that left there, which is regarded as a as a as a verb, you can no longer use I. It must go. It must take the objective pronoun, which is me. Let you and me go for a walk. Not let you and I go for a walk. Between you and me, this matter must remain a secret. Between you and me, not between you and I. Please take note. Between you and I, between you and me, this matter must remain secret. Between is a preposition, so any pronoun coming after it must be in the in the objective form. If you say between you and I, this matter must be a secret. You are wrong because of that between that comes before them. Point number eleven. It is also polite. To mention others first in phrases involving the speaker and others. If you are making sentences, maybe if you are, make, if, if you are making a, a sentences and you have a phrase that includes yourself, the speaker, and, and some other person, you will mention yourself last. That is the rule. That is the rule. So I told you, I've just said here that it is also polite to mention others first in phrases involving the speaker and others. For example, mom, you and I are going to the park. Not I, you, mom, I, you and mom are going to the park. No. The I that represents the speaker must come last. Example two. The principal said Joseph, you and I should see him after school, you see the I still going, still occurring at the last at the last position of the is coming last. So that is the right thing to do. The principal said, Joseph, you and I should see him after school. Not the principal said, I, you and Joseph should see him after school. As much as possible, let the I be at the last. The last but not the least point, point number 12. In one word or short response after the verb be, the objective pronoun is preferred. I take that again. In one word or short response after the verb be, the objective pronoun is preferred. For example, who owns the book? Me or it's me. Or I own the book. And if it's an informal setting, not I, or it's I. The subjective pronoun plus verb is, however, preferred in formal styles. For example, who owns this? She does, but not she. Don't just say she, or it is she. If you want to be short, you can go to, you can say I, or is I. However, the subjective is used if the response is long and involve the use of the who clause. Who removed it? It was they who removed it, or it was they that removed it. You can see this one is longer. You can you can use if it's longer, you can use the subjective. But if it's a short response, the objective pronouns are, are used. Who told you? It was he who told me. Or it was he that told me. What am I saying in essence? When it is a short response, pro, objective pro, uh, pronouns are used. If it's longer, you use the subjective. To confirm that the subjective pronoun is the correct option, um, is the correct option here, omit the subject, the verb, be, and who, and join the subject pronoun to the predicate. For example, who removed it? They removed it. Who told you? He told me. So, students, this is talking about the use of the personal pronoun. To be sure that you have 
understood my lesson and you've taken down everything that needed to be taken note of, I would like to give you this assignment. You do them, send them to the school website. I said here, choose the correct pronoun from the option in the bracket. Let you and dash agree on a date. In bracket, you have I stroke me. Is it I or me? You, give, you choose one. There is a meeting for you and dash. In bracket, I have I stroke me. One of them is correct. You choose the correct answer. They are stronger than you than dash. They are stronger than dash. You have you, she, and me as one option. She, you, and I in another option. How you and me in the last option. So choose one out of them. We are more intelligent than dash. Is it they or them? Choose one. He gave it to dash. Who we are here first. Is it we or us? So... You do them, send it to the school website, they will be marked, and you have your results. Thank you so much for listening, and have a nice day.